My name is Tane Cage, and I'm Clinical Associate Professor of Neurosurgery at Stanford University. Today, we'll be discussing epidural hematoma. Epidural hematoma, by definition, is when there is bleeding between the skull and dura, causing a rapid accumulation of blood in the epidural space. On this axial non-contrast head CT, you can see uh, this area of lesion uh, in the extraaxial space concerning for and typical for the appearance of an epidural hematoma. As far as clinical presentation, there can be either acute epidural hematomas or chronic. By far the most uh, common is the acute epidural hematoma. Um, clinically, patients often present with what's called a clinical lucid period. This means they have an initial loss of consciousness at the time of the trauma or onset of the epidural, followed by a return to GCS of 15, and followed yet again by a neurologic decline. In, epidural, in chronic epidural hematomas, the most common clinical uh, presentation is headache. Let's talk about a case presentation. This was a 28-year-old male who was brought in by ambulance to the emergency department after an unhelmeted fall from an electric scooter. This was a witness accident and EMS reported uh, that he did have a positive head strike as well as loss of consciousness. However, he regained consciousness before being brought to the emergency department. So his initial exam in the emergency department, he was GCS of 15, though he was unable to recall the event. Uh, he did report a headache. On exam, cranial nerves two through 12 were intact. He had no focal neurologic deficit on exam. External signs of trauma included a swelling and abrasion over the right temporoparietal region, which was seen on physical exam. Um, because he was brought to a busy level one trauma center, uh, unfortunately at the same time as multiple other traumas, he did not receive his head CT right away. Instead, he um, was examined approximately one hour later and his repeat exam in the ED revealed that he had a decline. He was now GCS of 13, E3, V4, M6. He was therefore rushed to the CT scanner. He had a non-contrast head CT, and here we see cuts of the axial and coronal uh, images from that scan. So these axial and coronal um, non-contrast head CT images revealed a large right uh, temporal hyperdense lentiform extraaxial lesion concerning for epidural hematoma. You can see that there's mass effect as well as midline shift that's placed on the brain. On bone window, it did show a non-displaced fracture of the temporal bone overlying this area of um, uh, epidural hematoma. In addition, you can see uh, the Within this hyperdense region, there are also areas of mixed density, some hypo and some isodense um, within that epidural hematoma. The patient was therefore taken emergently to the operating room for a right temporal craniotomy for evacuation of his epidural hematoma. Postoperatively, um, the patient returned to his baseline exam, um, uh, GCS of 15 with no focal neurologic deficits, and there were no issues nor complications in the operating room. Let's discuss etiology of epidural hematomas. Epidurals can be either from arterial bleeding sources or venous bleeding sources. The most common is arterial bleeding. Um, this accounts for 60% of, of epidural hematomas. The middle meningeal artery is the most common artery involved. Uh, this is likely due to its vulner vulnerable location and trauma as it crosses um, here over the um, temporal bone. The overlying skull uh, is thin in this area. And in addition, it is closely adherent to the uh, overlying skull, which makes it very vulnerable to um, traumatic tears and injury if the skull above it fractures. Another possible uh, etiology for epidural hematomas is a venous bleeding source. The venous sinuses are the most common venous source. However, you can also see epidurals coming from venous lakes in the dura or emissary veins. Consider venous bleeding if the blood uh, on CT image crosses the venous sinus, uh, or if on the imaging, you can see a diastasis of a suture overlying uh, the venous sinus uh, where the epidural hematoma is collected. This will um, uh, indicate that potentially there is a venous source. On imaging, the most common imaging modality, especially for acute epidural hematomas is a non-contrast head CT. 
uh, do consider getting a CT venogram or CTV if the blood crosses the venous sinus. Um, it's important to evaluate for venous sinus injury or occlusion, as well as active uh, extravasation on that head CT. Pay attention also to the bone windows to look for skull fractures, which can be displaced, non-displaced, or um, can present as a diastasis of the suture. If a patient presents with a chronic epidural hematoma, consider getting an MRI and or MRV um, to better characterize the chronicity as well as the um, source and um, status of the veins associated. On imaging, the appearance of epidural hematomas, uh, acute epidural hematomas appear hyperdense. Chronic epidural hematomas are isodense or hypodense. Hyperacute epidural hematomas, which describes an active extravasation, this can appear as a swirl sign, which is a hypodensity uh, within the hyperdense region of the uh, epidural. On CT imaging, the shape uh, uh, and location of epidural hematomas, they are usually lentiform or biconvex in shape. Um, and they usually do not cross suture lines, especially if the source is arterial in nature. As far as management for epidural hematomas, not all epidural hematoma, uh, excuse me, not all epidural hematomas um, must be emergently evacuated. There are criteria um, to indicate that a patient may be able to be observed, at least initially. If the patient is neurologically intact with a GCS of 15 and with no focal neurologic deficit, and the size of the epidural hematoma is less than 30 milliliters in volume, less than 15 millimeters thick, or less than five millimeters of midline shift, this patient may be able to be observed. If they are observed, they require frequent neurologic checks a repeat head CT stat if the neurologic exam declines. And if the patient is on any anticoagulation at home, um, reverse uh, the anticoagulation if possible and if indicated and treat any underlying coagulopathies at present. If you notice uh, venous sinus occlusion on the um, CT imaging, you must consider uh, the timing, need and duration of anticoagulation um, after the acute epidural hematoma. Many patients, however, do require emergent um, surgical evacuation of their epidural hematomas, especially the uh, trauma patients. Some indications for surgical evacuation. If the size of the epidural is greater than 30 milliliters, regardless of the patient's GCS, if there is midline shift greater than five millimeters, if the clot thickness is greater than 15 millimeters, and if the GCS is less than nine, there is a focal neurologic deficit, anisocoria, or if the GCS is declining, this patient will require surgical evacuation. Here are considerations uh, for those patients who do go to surgery. A craniotomy is the operation of choice. Um, you must plan the craniotomy around the entire epidural uh, hematoma to allow for evacuation, as well as um, controlling of, uh, any bleeding sources that you can see and identify. Pay attention to associated and overlying skull fractures. Um, to see how the skull fractures cross the planned craniotomy and how they may be involved in the bleeding source. If the middle meningeal artery is involved, be ready to control arterial bleeding. Uh, this is true for any arterial uh, bleeding source um, because the bleeding may be brisk, especially when the uh, uh, tamponade of the epidural clot is um, elevated and evacuated. Pay attention to involvement of the venous sinuses. Um, if there is concern for a venous sinus source of the bleeding, um, be concerned for intraoperative bleeding. If the clot is elevated off the sinus intraoperatively, then that um, tear or um, uh, rent in the sinus um, can, again, be the source of active bleeding. So have sinus patties ready. Be prepared to surgically repair the dural venous sinuses if needed. And if possible, consider waiting to evacuate these venous uh, hematomas to allow for that clot to form over the, the torn area of the sinus and therefore avoid intraoperative bleeding when you do go to evacuate the rest of the clot. Assess the bone for fractures and use bone wax as needed to control any bone bleeding. Utilize dural tack-up sutures to prevent reaccumulation of epidural hematoma. And usually for evacuations of epidural hematomas, the bone flap can in fact be replaced. Here are some take-home points. They're uh, clinically, a patient may have a lucid period. 
This again is uh, indicated when the patient has initial loss of consciousness um, and then return to excuse me, return to um, uh, GCS of 15 with no focal neurologic deficits, followed by uh, a decline or decompensation in their clinical exam. Radiographically, epidural hematomas appear as lentiform or biconvex shape most commonly. Pay attention to skull fractures, uh, the presence of them, including uh, diastasis of sutures, and pay attention to involvement of the venous sinuses. As far as management, there are indications for surgery, as well as times when patients can be observed. As far as surgical indications, if a patient has a GCS of less than nine, a focal neurologic deficit, any sicoria, declining uh, GCS, or if the epidural hematoma volume is greater than 30 milliliters in volume, the clot thickness is greater than 15 millimeters, the midline shift is greater than five millimeters, regardless of the GCS score. These are indications to operate. And there are special considerations. Consider if the patient uses anticoagulants, especially in the elderly. Um, many of these patients may come in on um, baseline anticoagulants and be uh, ready to reverse them if indicated and if possible. If the venous sinus is occluded, consider when uh, anticoagulation to treat this is safe to start after the uh, initial acute uh, epidural hematoma presentation and or their surgical evacuation. Here are our references. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure.